Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today. I learned Svelte series. Today we're going to be looking at SvelteKit and endpoints. This is going to be part one of three. We'll be looking at endpoints a couple times, and we're going to be going ahead and looking at how we can use endpoints in combination with no JavaScript. So if you don't have JavaScript enabled, how can you still do all of this stuff? And we're going to make our complete application so that it can continue to log in and log out with and without JavaScript. And all of this will be accomplished through endpoints. So let's go ahead and jump into our demo first here. You can see we have JavaScript enabled, first of all. We have you know, animations and all this. You can see I'm showing all of these right now because I haven't done this quite yet for the no JavaScript version. And I can still post here. And I can see, well, I'm not logged in yet. So let's go ahead and log in, like I said. So here's our user. And now we have a cookie with the JWT as before. Did that before. And I could say post, haha. There it is. I can sign out. So that's clicked properly. Now, if I go over here, I disable JavaScript. Go ahead and sign in again. Still have my cookie set. My local storage is not being used. Still post okay. And there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and disable this real quick, you guys. Apologies. And okay. So here we are. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do this with code. So the first thing is, hey, I'm David W. Parker. If you don't know me, I like to make Svelte and SvelteKit applications. And I also do a bunch of other things. So this is, uses a headless CMS here. So this is a separate backend. And you could support me on Patreon if you'd like this type of content. First thing is I added the cookie. And one thing to note is I am on a slightly older version of SvelteKit in these episodes. So if you've been hanging out, you'll see, you notice this is still dollar sign layout. Uh, it's now double underscore layout, I believe. I will be having a episode where I upgrade this particular application. I just haven't done it yet. I have a JWT store here that I've added to our stores. I have these helpers here to get a cookie and the value of a cookie. And I don't really use those much, but I'm just going to show you what I can do with them um, via what's available. So. We have this JWT and it's cassette, and it's gonna use that get cookie, but it doesn't really do anything. And so the reason for that, of course, is because if you look at our cookie here, you could see it's HTTP only and it's secure, meaning we do not have access to it within JavaScript. We only have access to it uh, via our HTTP requests using credentials. So that is something to note. Um, is we can't do that. Now we can go ahead and I will show you this endpoint real quick. So I have this HTTP only line here uh, that sets my cookie, that will set my cookie, and I'll explain this all in a moment. And if I do it without HTTP only, then we would have access to that, co uh, that cookie and we could have use it. But that's going to make things a little more less secure to and more... Uh, available to XSS or cross-site scripting. So in general, you're going to want to make sure your cookies are HTTP only. You'll also see that when I had turned off JavaScript, that that little register button disappeared. Again, we're going to go ahead and continue to build this out so that this works with both JavaScript on and with JavaScript off. And then, of course, I can sign out, and my JWT cookie is cleared. So that's the demo. Let's go ahead and dig into the code now. The first thing is I'm in my hooks here. I've added my API endpoint as well as my base endpoint. So this is my local 5,000, and this is my headless CMS at 3,000. And I've put, thrown those in both contexts as well as the session so that I'll have access to those. Within my APIs here, I made sure to have data creds to include those credentials. That way it gets passed back to the server. And then let's go ahead and start looking at each of these little sections. So the first one is, we'll look at logout in a moment. First thing to note is I said convert to a form for non-JavaScript users. 
So that's going to be what this sign out is referring to. And each of these, you'll see that register and settings, they don't show up without JavaScript on, whether I'm signed in or not. And that's because you can't use these svelte if statements and with JavaScript off. So we're not going to be using those move going forward very much. Um, but you can go ahead and use them if you don't care about non-JavaScript users. I like to have things work for accessibility reasons, etc. So our layout, I showed you already has that cookie value that doesn't really do anything. And these are really the only files that's changed. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger real quick. And let's look first at the post card. So again, the small change here, we're going to be passing in the JWT to the destroy. It's not actually being used quite yet. I don't actually don't even need to show that. Let's go ahead to the sign in first, because that's where you start. So as a user, you come in here. I'm going to be importing same uh, stores as before. Two things have changed here. The first thing that's changed is we have a new action. And the action is going to go to users sign in. And that is going to reflect the route. And the route is going to be the endpoint. So if we look here, we could see route users sign in. Now you might want to put your endpoints in some subfolder like API or endpoints or however you want to organize it. That's fine. Uh, I have them intermixed here, but do what is best for your application and how you like to have it organized. So it's going to be a post action on user sign in. The handle submit has also been changed so that the base endpoint here is going to be used rather than the API endpoint. It's going to go ahead and reflect the same URL as the action down below. So they're going to be both using the same. So let's go ahead and look at that first endpoint. So I have an importing cookie here. I'm importing my APIs. I'll come back to this method in a moment. And you can see it's a post. So that is very important because in here, we're making an API or a post request. And then, of course, down here within our form, we're making a post request. So the first thing is we're going to get our body. So our body is going to be the uh, tags here. So user login and user password. Or it's going to be all of this data here, which is provided via the API. Now I'm going to do, if body entries is instance of function, then I'm going to call this other function. Otherwise, I'm going to let it be. Now the reason, I can, well, first things first, I don't have to do instance of function. I could probably just check to see if I have JavaScript enabled via the headers. But in this instance, I'm just checking that it's going to be a function because we're going to call this function get form body. And it's going to use entries as a function. So if I know that exists, I can go ahead and call it. This was uh, via Dana Woodman. And here's his blog post where he says getting form body data in your silk endpoints. It's a good blog post. You should check out his blog, and he's very helpful on the Discord SvelteKit channel as well. And basically, this is going to be a way to convert all of the body uh, elements, which are these ones down here, to strings for you. So they're accessible by strings like this. So I'm going to go ahead and say, if body user login, and this is going to go ahead and use optional chaining, which means if it's these ones up here, Otherwise, fall back to the form one version. They go ahead and get my cookies out of the request headers, as well as the cookies array. I'm going to start building an array. By the way, all I'm going to just throw this real quick. This is all under this Svelkit example, or well, a lot of this is under endpoints here. You can see we have this request here, and they give a very small example. You can also check out examples via the demo application, which is provided when you're making a new Svelkit application. So then the rest of this API uh, request here is basically the exact same as we've done before on the front end. It's what this used to do, but I moved it to the back here, back end, so this little endpoint back end. Main difference is I have request context API endpoint because I need to have that API endpoint available. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the JWADUT from the headers, which will be provided for JavaScript users. Otherwise, I'm going to pass back in unknown for non-JavaScript users. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and start, uh, I'm going to get my current headers. I'm going to check the response. And if it's, if I don't have the cookies already set for my JWT, I'm going to go ahead and build a cookies array. I need to do path forward slash because if you go ahead and you put this under a different route, such as users, it'll get that path rather than the entire thing for your entire application. So you want to go ahead and set your path. You want it to be HB only and secure. And then for me, I'm just setting this to some infinite time right now. And I delete it out of my JSON response because that JSON response will be set into local storage for JavaScript users. I have a couple of placeholders here. You can ignore. And then I'm going to say if cookies array, let's go ahead and append that cookies array as a cookie. I'm going to use the sec cookie, and you can give it an array. That is in this felt kit doc documentation. Down here, you can see set cookie, and you can give it an array. And then finally, I'm going to say if it was a 200 and it's not JSON, go ahead and redirect to this forward slash, and then the endpoints must always return a status code, some headers, and a body. And I believe the headers aren't even necessarily required. Uh, the job is to return a status, headers, and body representing uh, each. Um, I would be explicit, though, and return the headers regardless. That's why I'm doing response.headers here, setting them here. I'm not sure if that's required, though. So, and then if you're a JavaScript user, I'm just going to return that JSON to the body. Otherwise, it's going to be a 303 and redirect. So that is the sign in. So again, I can go in, click sign in. I have JavaScript off, and it redirected me to that home page. I can type in like something like access equals e here. Do the sign in, and you could see it's going to be success equals t. Obviously. That doesn't exist. I want to go ahead and get a param or something. So that's the sign in. Let's go ahead and look at the post next. So, first, let's jump over to the post form. It's going to be the same changes, just slightly different. First thing is in our handle submit, we're going to do the based endpoint to posts. So, again, route. Posts and there's that in index right there. And it's going to make a post request. I've also changed the update, but I have not actually changed the code for it yet. So we'll, you will get there in a couple of episodes. Form action will be forward slash posts with method post. So again, both of these are reusing the exact same endpoint here, which is this route posts index. It is a post request here. I have the same form data, which we will be extracting out, of course, into a different section. But I'm just repeating it here for quick use. This is all the same code. We're, again, we're going to do optional chaining to get our title and our content out of this post form. Our title, content. And we'll be cleaning this up in a few episodes, by the way, to make this a little less janky. And then finally, we make our API post to our API endpoint with the correct URL, giving it the data in the format that it expects, passing in our JWT AUD, AUD, as well as our JWT. So this is from our cookies this time. So we got to make sure we, and you could probably go ahead and escape out of here early and say, you know, bad request if we, you know, cookies, we don't have cookies JWT, go ahead and return, you know, some bad response early, um, but I did not do that. But well, we could check that if we wanted to early, because it is required. But And that would just make it so we could go ahead and not make the actual API endpoint request, because it will respond with bad request if it does not have the JWT. I was having a little issue where the response needed this cookies array reset, so I went ahead and set that here. Again, placeholders for bad responses. And then this is all the same code, yet again, all of it. And we're going to clean this up over the next couple of episodes where we continue to look into Node.js and using endpoints. But that is how we can go ahead and make a new post. Hello. And you can see certain things are missing here. You know, we don't have our edits and destroy. 
you know, a lot of things are missing with Node.js on. We have both of these buttons showing. We don't see a register, et cetera. So a lot of little things. So finally, let's go ahead and look at the last uh, big one. Oh, let me just jump over before we look at sign out. One thing to note is I did, again, end up commenting out this extra statement here. So I'm signed out right now, but this form is always present. And I had to comment these out again because they don't work. You have JavaScript off. So we will get to cleaning those up as well. So finally, we have this nav. And we have path of user sign out. And as you know, a, a anchor tag will always make a get request if, uh, well, just in general. And we're going to do this handle sign out. Handle sign out is going to make a base endpoint delete request to user sign out, which is the same path as the get request here. Writing credentials, JWT, etc. So there's a couple things to note about this response is I have this delete here, which is for JavaScript on, and I have a get for JavaScript off. And it says temp, so temporary, we will convert this to a form so that it can make and reuse the exact same code for both. But for now, I just went and threw these in here so you could see that you can have the same endpoint. By same endpoint, I mean the same URL. So this is users sign out is the URL. This is a delete request. And this is a get request. And they're both in the same file, and that's OK. Both of these do the exact same thing as the other one, the other ones we looked at. The only difference is, since I know that this is JavaScript on, I don't do that extra check at the end, see if it's a non-JavaScript, the redirect. So headers location is how you do the redirect again, if you didn't recall. But we'll just walk through it again, just one more time. We're going to get our cookies. We're going to pass in the array. We're going to make a delete request to our API endpoint here, which lives at user sign out. We don't need to give any form data, but we do need to provide it with the JWT cookie. Afterward, we're going to go ahead and set our JWT cookie to nothing because we want to delete it and then set it to 1970. Have some placeholders again for bad requests. And we're going to go ahead and make sure we do the set cookie here. And then finally, within our success, we will redirect to the uh, index homepage with a 303. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and return the JSON response and doing the same here. So that's it for this super introductory level of endpoints. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and doing do a little bit more with Node.js on. And then we're going to go ahead and clean up the code overall and make a few more endpoints work, um, such as deleting posts and editing posts, and how we can have all of that work using endpoints and having JavaScript on and off with SilkKit. If you like this kind of content, I really appreciate feedback. I really appreciate comments below. I will appreciate likes, subscriptions, uh, Patreon support, etc. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks.